Welcome to some more stories, tales of transformation inspired by being outdoors. My name is Marianne Rowe. I'm a founding teacher of Monterey Bay Meditation Studio and a psychotherapist in Pacific Grove, California, the traditional lands of the Ohlone Rumson people. Over the past few years, I've been blessed with meeting a number of extraordinary people who have extraordinary relationships with the outdoors. Whether working as a scientist, an educator, a healer, an artist, a researcher, an attorney, or an environmental activist, each of these individuals engage their heart and their spirit as well as their mind in all of their work. Each brings a sense of reverence, compassion, service, and reciprocity, as well as a profound understanding of inter interbeing into their relationship with the world outdoors. Each has a story of being transformed by the outdoors and has graciously agreed to share this story with us. Sitting by the campfire here with me today to offer some more stories is shamanic healer, psychotherapist, and teacher, Jennifer Farley. Jennifer runs a private practice integrating shamanic practices with body-based psychotherapy. She interweaves her formal education and training with an innate gift and passion for supporting people in cultivating their own sense of spirituality as a pathway to healing, thriving, and evolving. I'm very happy to say that Jennifer is also a lead teacher at Monterey Bay Meditation Studio. Welcome, Jen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, thank you for joining us to share how your relationship with the outdoors has been an inspiration and an orienting foundation for your personal life and your professional offerings in the world. So with respect to the original indigenous inhabitants and stewards of the land that we live on, we begin our conversation with a land acknowledgement. Whose traditional lands are you on, Jen? I'm also on the Ohlone, Costa Noa, and Rumson people's lands. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. So, Jen, as, as I've enjoyed getting to know you over the past few years, I've been inspired by the reverence and depth of care that you embody in your relationship with the outdoors. Your profound connection with the earth and all her beings is an integral part of the healing and teaching that you offer and how you live every day. I'm feeling curious about the origin of this long-term relationship that you have with the earth and with the skies. So what were you curious about as a child and how has that curiosity affected your relationship with the earth and the universe? I've been curious about a lot of things. Curiosity was certainly a leading quality that I had from a young age. And overall, I had a lot of curiosity in um, creativity and like dance and performing and mm -hmm. also creating like crafts, uh, art, jewelry, um, and just really discovering and creating beautiful things <laughs> I think I was always mm -hmm. fascinated by something that would catch catch my eye that I found to be beautiful and wanting to go towards it 
study it more, figure it out. Um, and I, there's such an abundance of that in nature that I naturally would just gaze up at the sky and wonder how it was all working and wondering what was going on up there or gazing, really studying a flower mm. and all the little pieces of it and zooming in, zooming out mm. and then wanting to create that and create with those things. So mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. How would you describe your relationship with the outdoors? Well, my relationship with the outdoors, a deep one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I have personal relationships with different beings outside and generally feel connected to the large flow of creation when I am outside mm -hmm. and my relationship with a tree is different than a relationship with the ocean and different mm -hmm. than a relationship with um, a squirrel mm -hmm. or my lavender so mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a, a very, um, I have a very diverse relationship mm -hmm. with nature, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and the personal is a is a word that comes to my mind that that you're not like clumping nature into one big thing. It's the 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 personal relationship with the lavender, personal relationship with the ocean. That there's something. Mm, that's different and unique in your relationship with each. Yes, yes. Mm, beautiful. So I'm, I'm curious if, if there have been some deeper questions that drew you to your present day relationship with the outdoors. Were there longings or rememberings or, or perhaps a calling in addition to your curiosity and your creativity and love of beauty, were there was there something in addition? Well, in spending time outside, I was really, I really found a natural ability to build relationship with the plants and with the animals around mm -hmm. me as a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was essentially asked to be outside all the time. Mm -hmm. Like my parents were like, go play, um, mm -hmm. come back when it's dark. You know, I grew up mm -hmm. in an area where that was just how it was. And so mm -hmm. sometimes there were, other kids to play with and sometimes there weren't and when there weren't um I just naturally played with the other beings around me and mm -hmm. at the time it never occurred to me that that would be strange or different or weird and mm -hmm. um, not that it is considered that now but mm -hmm. some might <laughs> it just didn't it didn't seem that different than playing with another kid and mm -hmm. And so that really established my sense of feeling connected and feeling uh, a part of mm. something at all times. And so mm. as I grew up and had experiences where I did feel deep loneliness or did feel mm. a deep disconnect, found myself returning to nature as a means of finding connection that every human needs yeah. to thrive or to be okay mm -hmm. so that that deep need for connection is probably one of the core foundational pulls towards nature and and then 
led me to really cultivate as an adult an intentional relationship with the natural world again. Mm. In doing that, that deep connection led me to feel a really big spiritual experience and that was really valuable to me and from that that it grew in my awareness that part of how I was being called to show up as a healer is not only as a psychotherapist but to bring in the experience of spirituality into people's healing process as well and um because nature was such a an avenue for me to experience that spirituality uh, it's oftentimes a gateway i think for people to be able to step into that world in a very accessible way mm. 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 I'd love to hear more, Jen, about that pathway that you found, that, that um, if there was a, 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 a particular experience that, you know, had, had that occur, or was it a series of circumstances that just unfolded, or um, how, how did that that deep knowing of this is my calling. How did that arrive for you? It arrived over a gradual period of time, a cumulative period of time, and, and through a lot of resistance, <laughs> um, there were there were just percolations of me wondering about bringing spiritual healing into my work and then i would push it away uh, pretty quickly because the the avenue of spirituality that you know that I really study and deeply feel connected to through nature is shamanism and I really felt like I had no business as a white person from New Jersey even considering that I could be um, somebody who can be in the shamanic healing world, so that, that just wasn't a world that I was allowed or that I had a right to be in. Mm -hmm. And and it's actually through my connection with nature and the messages that I've received in my relationships to different beings. If you want me to go more into that, I can. Please. It's through those relationships that actually eventually pushed me to to sit in the discomfort that I was feeling about mm -hmm. owning my healing talents and mm -hmm. and trust that I would sort through it in a way that still felt an integrity in terms of respecting people's culture. Um, and and I do feel like I've come to a place where that is true. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the specific experiences that I'm talking about, um, I would I often I hike often, and by hike sometimes it's more like meander aimlessly, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or mm -hmm. or walk and then feel called to be with a certain tree or a certain plant that I see and chill with, mm -hmm. with that, with that plant for a while and then walk mm -hmm. some more. So mm -hmm. 
very different experience than mm -hmm. um, get to the top, mm -hmm. <laughs> get back yes. down, that sort yes. of thing. Um, but so would one day, for example, I was sitting with a tree. I was on one of my hikes and felt called to be with the tree. And um, so sat there with the tree, leaned against the tree, really felt a lessening of the boundary between where I began and where the tree began and felt the flow of the energy going up through the trunk and up into the leaves um, and down into the root system and just really felt one of the closer, one of I've many experience of just shape shifting into and with the tree yes. and experiencing that oneness that um that people can talk about or kind of intellectually understand you know, having an experience of that and after having that type of experience the uh, the message was, you, you know, your flow is like this flow. Um, so you need, you need this flow to be able to just happen. Um, it's, it's just as natural as the flow that's happening with this tree. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was one teaching that I received. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've received other teaching around just knowing that that there's a way to contribute to people healing and contribute to people evolving that spans beyond identification with a certain culture or even a, even humanity <laughs> um <laughs> And that it's a sacred obligation to offer that when you can. So um, those are a couple examples of, and, and I got those teachings straight from nature beings. Yes. Um, straight from the natural world. And yes. I love being able to talk about that and mm -hmm. I love being asked about nature in this way because my whole if my whole desire is to really empower people to to understand that mm -hmm. you anyone can have this type of relationship with nature. <laughs> It's yes. absolutely just pretty to look at. Um, yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. The word that comes arises in mind is communion. That 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 sense of of deep communion. Of I mean, and, and, and I hesitate to even use the word connection because connection itself implies two. You know, and so yeah. that actual merging or the awareness of of what is shared, um, you know, without losing your individuality, I mean, to holding both, but that 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 we tend to think of ourselves as these little silos, and and we we forget that oh, we're we are actually part of this whole bigger field. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So, and as you were talking about, you know, your your enjoyment of of helping others remember that aspect of 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 themselves, your your eyes kind of lit up, and and um. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that aspect of 
your work and your way of being in, in the world. Whatever you'd like to share about that and that pushing away, pushing away that resistance initially and then whoosh, full on acceptance of, and this is what I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, and I'll say too that with that pushing away, I, I became ill, not, I didn't have a particular diagnosis, but I mean, I was unwell. I was melancholy. I felt empty. I felt, I felt disconnected. I felt just, um, like melancholy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, mm -hmm. if, uh, yeah, that was probably, if I could guess what that word really meant, like that's what I was mm -hmm. feeling at the time. Mm -hmm. And so there was also an element of, well, I can't go on like this. And, yeah. um, and I've been going away from, and that has correlated with me feeling bad. And mm -hmm. so I guess I have to go towards <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> see what happens mm -hmm. um so that was part of my acceptance process as well as really mm -hmm. realizing that I wouldn't be well or feel whole if I uh pushed away from this forever mm -hmm. and and so I began to really bring in the the shamanic teaching that mm -hmm. I have studied into my work with people, um, into my therapy practice, seeing people that I that weren't therapy clients but wanted shamanic healing specifically. Um, and having a lot of encouragement from the the teachers mm. from the Andes to carry this teaching forward. Um, the Waskar and Inkari lineage that is an Andean lineage um, from South America and, and also flows into Central America along the Andes. The teachers that I work with are really really proponents of their teachings getting out there by whomever. Um, and so knowing that I had their support and their permission to begin to bring um, these practices to more and more people, I started to do that. And as I have done that and continue to do, I still, I love this work. Mm -hmm. um, and I've discovered in doing that, that it's, sh that shamanism is what really spoke to me from my mm -hmm. foundations and in connecting to nature and just in the truth that I have about how things work, it fit together. That, um, that that might not be what speaks to everyone. And so wanting to empower people to find their own, their own way of connecting with that spirituality. And that's what I really discovered in this kind of ever evolving thing that on some level started with me just playing around outside as a kid <laughs> <laughs> from the beginning you were yeah. in it <laughs> you've, been, you've been in training ever since <laughs> listening and listening and listening yeah mm. yeah I kind of just followed what was interesting to me and what uh, felt like it helped me to thrive and mm -hmm. and kept organically getting new information about what was next. Uh, and so that mm -hmm. has really been how my path has happened. I haven't, mm -hmm. I haven't had many 
kind of like lightning bolt moments Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. people describe where I listen Mm -hmm. to it and I'm fascinated. Mm -hmm. Um, And that hasn't been how my story goes. My story has been this gradual, ever unfolding organic Mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Hearing you describe that, what I'm struck by is the 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 intuitive trust that, that to follow. Yes. And and that at some level, even though some part of you might be going, no, 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 but at some level there was that following your interest, that that's it's like a little GPS system. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and going through that period of time that was painful, but that was it was like the recalculating, you know, that to, to that that I, I really appreciate Jen, your speaking to that that illness part of what a, the illness that arises when we are off track and Mm -hmm. and speaking to that as a signal and 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 learning how to to read the signals that that we are given yes yeah Mm. exactly um and there's a lot of ways that I could have made meaning of that illness or that that time of struggle Mm -hmm. and the one that I described makes the most sense to me because as soon as I did kind of recalibrate and get back on track I felt better (laughs) (laughs) and things continue to open and open yeah yeah for you Mm -hmm. walking into the grocery store where the doors just open (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. So, you have a project that is about to open its door, cultivating spirituality and helping folks hmm, find find their path. And and I wonder if if you would say a little bit about that and how that relates to your own experience and and what what you are hmm, wanting the, to open the door to for for others. Um, sure. So, um, yes, I'm starting a, a group called Cultivating Spirituality, and Mm -hmm. there's three series of 10 weeks. Each series is 10 weeks, and so it'll run throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited about this because I the, the focus of the group is for people to gather together who want to have a sustained experience of spirituality in their life and who maybe are lost or overwhelmed or daunted in terms of how to have that Mm -hmm. and really wanting to help people who I mean, maybe read a lot of books or listen to spiritual podcasts or are spiritual seekers and taking in the information about it is different than actually cultivating a practice where you mm. feel connected to spirit and feel like you have a relationship with spirit. Mm-hmm. And uh, that has been, the, so the, the offering of this group is, is really a direct outshoot of my own journey yes. and finding my own I've always placed value on having experiences Mm -hmm. and I actually 
get impatient with uh, with just consuming information mm-hmm. or staying in the intellect about things mm-hmm. because I think my natural being is more of a kinesthetic experiential mm-hmm. way of understanding the world. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's, it, it's a, it's something that I feel I can uniquely offer is the yes. ability to cultivate experiences of spirit and, mm-hmm. and have that translation happen mm-hmm. for people that might be struggling to mm-hmm. create that in their life. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, I love that emphasis on the experiential because we are fed this ongoing feed of of information, information, and and it goes just so far. But then there's the actual engagement that and the relational piece that happens experientially. It doesn't happen through a narrative that we're just reading or watching. Yeah. Right. Right. So just. We mentioned that this is happening in three sections. So if someone didn't, if someone missed the first section, is it possible that somebody can come in later in this this process or is this? Yeah, no. So uh, each 10 week series, it's its own closed mm-hmm. little bubble. Okay. So okay. Um, the first series starts on February 15th. Mm-hmm. So pretty soon mm-hmm. um and that 10 week series once it starts people can't enter midway mm-hmm. through that but mm-hmm. then when series two starts mm-hmm. you could you could enter in at 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 that point wonderful and, wonderful uh, go from there mm-hmm. good good yes mm. and it will be the same there'll be different offerings in each series mm-hmm. yeah. different four ways into the house mm-hmm. Hmm. So do you do you personally have have practices or or ways of engagement that keep your sense of of belonging and connection with the outdoors nourished and alive? I mean you you mentioned your meandering walks and listening mm-hmm. and so um to elaborate on that, or if there are other ways that you have found work for you to just feed that relationship? Yes, I uh, have all different ways. So uh, in watering my plants, uh, mm-hmm. I water my plants like every other day-ish, mm-hmm. some of them every day. And when I water my plants, I talk to them yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and, um, and have intention with what, I, where I'm focusing while I'm watering. Like as mm. I water, I might be also intending, um, love and sending love mm. and nourishment, um, mm. to those plants, Mm-hmm. Uh, I tend to them taking away the dead stuff, mm-hmm. making sure they're okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, I do just kind of talk to them like I would talk to people. Um, mm-hmm. And I do mm-hmm. get sense of response that mm-hmm. feels like it's a two-way street. Mm-hmm. So that's a really practical one. Oftentimes I, oh, well, I sleep outside as much as I can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's that. Yes, so, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, uh, we have this set up on our deck where we have really a nice, like, outdoor bed almost, an air mm-hmm. mattress. And where we live, we can hear the ocean mm-hmm. and just love sleeping under the open sky. And so mm-hmm. particular in this pandemic time, mm-hmm. it's been a way to feel uh, a sense of connection with the natural world 
in a consistent way, whereas we might go camping more often, typically. Mm -hmm. Um, And with that, again, when the moon's out Mm -hmm. and I'm laying under the moon, saying hello, visiting with the moon um, beyond gazing at her, Mm -hmm. um, really feeling that grandmotherly connection to Mm -hmm. that relationship to the moon and Mm -hmm. um, confiding in her in ways that feel right for me and um, being comforted. And so I do a lot of just talking to nature I don't know how other to say it Mm -hmm. in in cultivating that that relationship there's a um shamanic practice called seke practice Mm -hmm. Mm s-e-k-e and it's a type of meditation where you're essentially feeling into having a core an energetic cord between you Mm -hmm. and a nature being Mm -hmm. and getting to know the type of energy flow through that practice. Mm -hmm. Um, And then once, once you kind of get a feel for it, it's, it's like the, the cocktail hour uh, (laughs) (laughs) of getting to know a nature being. And then eventually, you know, it's just kind of there and you don't really have to Mm -hmm. focus on it and, Mm -hmm. and go through the Mm -hmm. whole formal, like Mm -hmm. really being present with the cord itself, Mm that the cord's just flowing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The relational pieces. I mean, it's, that's, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Just feeling the relationship and being conscious and intent and intentional in relationship, yeah, with 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 these with any living being. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, what do you know or? feel about the outdoors that you wish everyone could know or feel? Um, I wish everyone knew that they were a part of the outdoors. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Because if you know you're a part of something, you tend to take care of it more. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wish, I feel repetitive in saying this, but I I do wish people understood the, the ability to be in relationship with the outdoors. and the wisdom that those relationships can bring that there's the capacity to truly understand how your world works in a much more in-depth way. If you are open to listening to what the natural world has to say it's people i think on a on a baseline people can admire nature i think people oftentimes people can feel a sense of grounding when they're in Mm -hmm. nature or a sense of peace Mm -hmm. um or a sense of wonder and I love all of that and I would encourage Mm -hmm. more and more and more of that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's more 
Yes. There's more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, I love that. Love that. It, it, you, it seems that you're pointing to the, the reciprocity, the, 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 the it's like a, a conversation rather than a monologue, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and there's the, the, mm, the, the phrase, what you pointed to with the, when we know we're part of something, we tend to take care of it. And, and in that caretaking, there's, there's a joy of taking care of something that we care about, you know? Mm-hmm. So when we're giving, there's also that giving back of, of experiencing that joy and that appreciation of, of this being that we are in relationship with and, mm-hmm. and, and are blessed or wise enough to know we're in relationship with it. You know, it's, it's not, it's not an it. You know, there's, right. that, there's an us here it's walking around in us. <laughs> so in the the listening what what do you sense that the the earth is wanting us to hear and understand or what are the what are the stories that that need to be heard um I believe the earth is really wanting us to get that we are one system. Mm -hmm. And I believe the earth is also sending a bit of a firm message (laughs) right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that that message is that it can she can do just fine without us Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. that it's a privilege to be a part of the system Mm -hmm. and that the system moves towards creation and thriving and so if there's something messing with that capacity that there's course correction and right now we might be that something (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah that we I mean I do believe we have unique gifts that we can offer to earth Mm -hmm. and that we have a unique ability to contribute to the thriving of our planet and the thriving of nature here. And I don't believe we're the only way that that can happen. And there's a humility that's important um, and a humility that nature has taught me about you know, who I am in the grand scheme of things. And I really have a lot of respect for that and see it as a privilege to be able to keep going. Mm. Yes. You know, that's a bit of a somber story. <laughs> oh no, no, I, 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 I actually, I, I, I'm not receiving it as a somber story. I'm the the way that it lands for me, which is the only person I can speak for, is is um, we're we're you know, if 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 the gentle shaking doesn't wake us up then there's a more 
firm shaking. And if that doesn't wake us up, then, you know, we get the two by four, you know, yeah. and, and, and the, the, but that the, all of those are in service of our waking up. Mm-hmm. Yes. To realize the privilege to realize the, the, the privilege of being part of this thing, this, this system, this miracle that is so much more than, you know, what we could even imagine. Mm -hmm. Just to, so it's an invitation to realize that. Yes. And, and be joyful and respectful of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so Jen, from what you know, and also from what you don't know, what what is the 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 what are the seeds that that you are wanting to plant for the future? I'm wanting to plant. the seed that we are in a space where really understanding connection beyond ourselves is essential. Mm -hmm. Uh, Beyond ourselves, meaning both on different levels, our, our personal process, our human relationships, um, beyond the connection that we have beyond that, beyond just our human experience relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to plant the seed of helping people understand this is a lesson that I learned through nature for sure that the things that happen in our life are not personal um, and that we have choice and capacity in how we integrate those experiences into who we become. And I want to plant a seed that if your pursuit of a spiritual connection doesn't hurt you, doesn't hurt somebody else, and leads to a general sense of thriving, that you're on the right path and that there's no right or wrong. There's no one truth about how to experience spirit. And like, you can feel empowered to just trust it's not that complicated (laughs) 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 and you can you can just have a relationship with spirit and it doesn't have to require meditating for 12 hours every day (laughs) it could but it doesn't Mm -hmm. happen Mm -hmm. i like that it's not that complicated, nor is it foreign, you know? Yeah. It's already there. Yeah. It's just waiting to to be cultivated. Yeah. I, I really like the seeds that, that you are planting. I want to play in your garden. <laughs> May they all thrive. (laughs) That was a fun way to put it because 
when you said plant seeds, I was like, well, for plant seeds, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll go. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, yay. <laughs> so, Jen, how if how could people get in touch with you? How can folks, if if they're feeling called or inspired by your your words and your being, how can how can folks find you? So I have a website, mm-hmm. www.shamanhealingmonterey.com. I'm also on Facebook. Mm-hmm at sh monterey dot, or just at sh monterey uh, i'm also a teacher with the monterey bay meditation studio so i'm mm-hmm. on their website yes and those are the easiest ways to find me wonderful wonderful mm. i'm i'm feeling so much gratitude for for you're sharing not only the the narrative, but also and perhaps even more the 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 inspiration and and your heartfelt energy and dedication um, of your relationship with with the outdoors and and that your your what's coming through you into the world and and that you're letting it. <laughs> that you're you're letting it through. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm, thank you so much for for sharing with us. Mm. That was wonderful. Uh, so I'm going to do a little closing here. Um, so some more off, some more stories is an offering of Monterey Bay Meditation Studio in service of cultivating relationship of ref, reverence and reciprocity with the outdoors. This relationship arises naturally as we realize our profound connection with the planet that we live on and the universe of which we are part. For more information about this series, the courses, and the community of Monterey Bay Meditation Studio, please go to MontereyBayMeditation.com or check out our YouTube channel for additional recordings in this series. And so, Jen, I I select a quote that um, it reminds me of or calls to my heart and mind the, the storyteller. And so this is the quote that that came for you. (laughs) We need the sun, the moon, the stars, the rivers and the mountains and birds, the fish in the sea to evoke a world of mystery, to evoke the sacred. Thomas Berry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here, here. (laughs) Hmm. So from the campfire underneath the night sky, this is Marianne Rowe and Jen Farley wishing you warmth, s'more sweetness, and awe. Thank you for being with us. <laughs>